this is Sophia and this is Sophia as well but also this is Sophia and even though it's very easy to put Sofia and overall Bulgaria into a box and to say that it's a typical Eastern European city, the truth is Sofia is a little bit different because in its history, which is more than 2000 years, it has been occupied by Romans, Greeks, Ottomans and it has also been part of the Soviet Union. All this mix of cultures is also very visible in our traditions, in the people, in the architecture, but also in the food as well. Hi guys, it's your London friend Vasi that loves her city and also loves traveling but today I have a very very special video for you because I'm taking you to my home country Bulgaria If you want to see more videos from London or travel related content don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and let's grow the curious gang And one of the questions which uh, I get very very often is uh, where is actually Sofia and Bulgaria? It is of course in Eastern Europe, it is situated in the Balkans and uh, it is uh, in very much uh, in the south because we have uh, borders with Greece, Turkey, also Macedonia, Serbia and Romania. And Bulgaria is actually a great destination for all of you budget travelers because there are so many offers of uh, cheap flights uh, into the country so in case you're looking for a great offer this is one of the places you should be looking at and once you land in Sofia you can actually directly take the underground and go directly to the city center and just a tip if you take the underground it costs less than one euro it's actually just 80 cents to get from from the airport into the city. This is also one of the best ways for you also to move into the city once you are in there because all the stations are quite new, they're, uh, they're pretty modern and uh, also very well maintained and if you're a tourist and I mean most probably you don't speak Bulgarian then uh, this is the only public tr transport I suggest you using because it is the only place where you will hear English. If, if you actually prefer taking a taxi because we don't have Uber in Bulgaria, then I suggest you downloading the app of uh, Yellow Taxi because this is like the only way in which uh, you're sure you won't be scammed once you're in the city. Oh, and uh, something which I still haven't mentioned is that the currency that we have is called LEV and uh, one LEV is uh, equivalent to 50 cents. And let's see what are the best things to do in Sofia. Well, you guys, if you Google this, you will see like tons of churches popping up onto your homepage. But if you're not so much into visiting churches, I still suggest you visiting one for sure. And this is the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral because it's like the symbol of Sofia, but also kind of the symbol of Bulgaria. And uh, it is the second biggest uh, Orthodox church in the Balkans and it was built after our independence from the Ottoman Empire and it is built in honor of all the 200,000 Russian soldiers that helped uh, in the Russo-Turkish War. It's really nice, it's really relaxing like city, you know, like if you look at like, you look at the church, you know, the gardens, you know, like where, where kids are playing, you know, it's really like, I think it's a, a really good place for a family. And if you want to see some Roman ruins, you can visit the ancient Serdica complex, which fun fact, it was found around 2010 when they were excavating to build a new metro line and then out of the blue, this whole ancient Roman city popped up. And something which I love about Sofia is that it has a lot of uh, natural springs all around and they have been attracting all types of visitors ever since medieval times and this is the reason why also the Ottomans have built in Haman and like their typical Turkish baths in the city. 
you're wondering what are these people doing, they're actually filling up lots of bottles with natural spring water, which is there and, you know, you can take it for free and it's literally like the one that you can buy from the supermarket. And you guys, when I was giving tours around Sofia, one of the things of which like visitors were very surprised about is that we have in the city, of course, uh, Orthodox churches. There is uh, also a working mosque and also a working synagogue. And the most famous building, which is left still from communist times, it is this one, which is the former communist party house. But if you're wondering how this more of a regular building left from the communist his times looks like it looks more like this yeah it doesn't really have the same shine to it does it oh my god i was about to forget uh, a very famous building which personally i don't really like uh, at least the look of it it is the national palace of culture which is also known as ndk and uh, i find it a little bit ugly but for example my boyfriend ben loves it this is the place where you will find a lot of like skaters around or like teenagers having a beer or just having a chat around especially in summer it's full of people and it is super lively it's a place we should which you should definitely not miss when you're in the city it is the the national theater of Ivan Vazov which is in neoclassical style it is super pretty and nice but also what I love about it is that it is a, a very nice spot of where people hang out so cute it's actually full of graffitis all around the city i don't know if you have realized that like some of them were made like just from people from self-expression but others like this one are actually like part of the store and of the urban development so of course like people were paid to do it but if you look around all around the city you will see many of them If it is your cup of tea, I definitely suggest you giving the nightlife in Sofia a shot because it is, uh, it is actually pretty great. Last time that I was in Sofia, I went out in there, I went to a pretty famous club, I took a cocktail and the cocktail costed less than 10 euros, which, which is pretty amazing. And now let's talk about food in Bulgaria. Well, Bulgarian cuisine might not be as famous as the Italian cuisine or the French one, but I have to say it is still pretty delicious and uh, something of which personally I'm very proud of is that we have great produce, especially the fresh fruit and veggies in summer. Vasi gave me 20 seconds to talk about what I think about Bulgarian food. So first of all, I love it. It's full of like super yummy dairy products, especially cheese. It's really, really tasty. Meat is also nice as well. I really like pork. Like there's a lot of like pork stuff. Oh, the basis like uh, mother pork chops are the best thing in the world. And uh, also like compared to like the Italian cuisine, the salads Bulgarians make is really delicious and super fresh and yummy. Oh, and not to forget, we have our own yogurt and it is like a religion. We're very proud of it. These are a couple of dishes that you should also definitely try. Let me just tell you that if you go to a restaurant in Bulgaria, well, of course we have like our traditional restaurants which offer like very typical food, but personally I find them a little bit boring because this is quite like the food that my mom would cook for me. So when I go out, I usually prefer going to like a little bit more modern places, which usually take like typical, I don't know, Italian, French dishes or like American ones and they kind of uh, put a Bulgarian twist into them and it's pretty delicious, I have to say. Here we have like this brunch and this thing is like smoked salmon. We have two poached eggs, 
it's it looks and really like delicious. Side salad. How is yours? Oh my god, it looks fantastic. Look at that. There's so much food. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is the beef and with eggs and like melted cheese. No, that's not cheese. It's a it's a sauce. It's a sauce. No, I think it was cheese as well. Oh, like melted okay. gold down. Yeah, and and a side salad always. And there's like quite a lot of salmon as well. Like the ratio of salmon to bread is like mm -hmm. my taste. <laughs> there is also this sauce in here. How is it? It's delicious. Mm. And after that, we got these pancakes, which were like literally this type of mix of like Bulgarian food with international one. So here are the pancakes with like tons of jam. I feel like this is mascarpone. Oh my, oh my god, there's so much jam. Wait. So the cheese that you see in here, mm -hmm. this is like the typical Bulgarian it's cheese. Mess, but, mm. Whereas I think the mm. one that is on top, mm. Mm. it's more of a mascarpone, I think, if I'm not wrong. And now let's talk about money. Well, one of the best things about Bulgaria is that it is pretty cheap, let's be honest. Well, not too cheap, but at the same time, if you're coming from like Western Europe or the UK, then the chances are prices there will be pretty low. For example, if you go to a hotel, the average night, it will be around 40 euros per night. But if you decide to spend just like 10 or 20 euros more, then you can actually afford a five star hotel, which Come on, I don't think there are many other European countries where you can do that. And uh, talking about food, well, street food, it is very cheap and you can get a meal for just like one or two euros per person. If you decide to go to a restaurant, then per person it will be around 10 euros, unless you decide to go like up to a very high-end restaurant, then be up to like 25 euros per person. You guys, if you are enjoying this content and you want to see more videos from London or travel related content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below because it really helps me out. Love you all! Bye!